Welcome to another lecture of uh, HR Analytics. This is our lecture number eight, in which we will talk about the uh, rewards and compensation management. So we'll basically be talking about what is compensation management and some of the concepts, especially the mathematical concepts related to the compensation management. So first of all, uh, what is compensation management? Compensation is actually uh, anything that an employee gets for his job performance or for his time or for his energy or for his skills that he or she is giving to the organization. So if we go into a detailed definition, then we can say that compensation management in HR, it's a HR discipline of planning and administering everything of financial and non-financial value that an employer gives to an employee in exchange for his or her work. So generally, it includes the salary, the wages, and the benefits, the bonuses, the commissions, and rewards, etc. So everything that an employee gets for the job that he or she is performing is actually compensation and how do you manage it is a matter of uh, uh, the HR excellence or HR uh, strategic division. Now this is an example of uh, making us understand that how people uh, manage the compensation of the employees. So let's assume if there is a job of uh, equal time and task and equal nature which is paying you 50,000 rupees. And there's another job which is paying you 40,000 rupees in terms of salary. It is the same job in terms of everything, except the how, how they are managing the compensation. But uh, this organization is paying 50,000 rupees or dollars. This organization is paying 40,000 dollars or rupees as a salary. Naturally, people will go to this job. But what if we start actually managing the compensation, making the right formula or adding some benefits into it? Now, what if, if uh, this job is offering the pension, some of the education uh, reimbursement, medical insurance, and let's say a phone card or your monthly bill? So what happens is that usually if uh, an organization starts saving, let's say 5,000 rupees per month from your account to some bank or something, and there's a requirement that you will have to complete 25 years to claim your pension. So just calculate 5,000 rupees per month into 25 years so this is going to make some amount of money which if kept in a bank and even if you do not even invest it you get some kind of interest or something and after 25 years with the compound interest and everything you just give your employee let's say 25,000 rupees worth of pension and after that person is no more you can give this pension to his or her spouse and then uh, to their children who are less than 18 years of age or whatever but you see it is your money it is just being the management the good management from the HR or from the management people let's say if 5000 is here they also add approximately 2000 to your education and that makes roughly uh, about 24,000 rupees a year uh, they're saving that and then let's say if there's a cost of medical allowance which is uh, uh, 2000 rupees or medical insurance which is, which is 2000 rupees per person and then a phone card of 100 or 1000 rupees so this all constitute actually 10000 extra and 40000 this so in total this organization is also spending around 50000 rupees but they are adding benefits and making these jobs very attractive and they are only paying the salary. So this is how usually your compensation is being managed by the HR department. Uh, what is the difference between salary and wage? Usually we use these two words uh, in different uh, compensation management practices. 
Now, there might be many other differences, but in simple terms, wage is calculated hourly, daily, or on weekly basis. They can also be calculated with the piece rate or something. But your salaries are calculated on monthly or annual basis. Now, how they are different? Wage calculation is different. Salary calculation is different. So let's suppose how wage is calculated. If you're working for eight hours and your rate is $10, so they will eventually give you $80 or 80 rupees for these eight hours. This is how you calculate wage. Or if your per day rate is, let's say, $100, so how many days have you given to the organization? the same way it will be calculated. Now we are not saying that when it is uh, given to you, we are saying the basis of the calculation. If the basis of the calculation is hourly, daily or weekly basis, then it is usually known as a wage or the piece rate. The piece rate says that let's suppose uh, you have to stitch uh, bed sheets and if you stitch one bed sheet, you will be given ten dollars so if you stitch 100 bed sheets you will be given wages according to the piece rate which is one piece 10 rupees and then one thousand dollars or one thousand rupees can be given to you so this is how you calculate now it doesn't mean you might calculate the wages but you can pay the employee after one month but the basis of the calculation will be daily, hourly or weekly or piece rate wages. But if you talk about salary, salary in the contract is usually mentioned in monthly basis and annual basis. So you have to perform certain tasks that are assigned to you. Sometimes they are fixed, sometimes they are flexible, but the monthly salary will remain the fix and it will be calculated based on how many months have you worked or how many years are you working. So if there's a, let's say, annual salary of uh, 12,000, 12,000 annual, so every month you will be given 1,000 rupees or $1,000. So it is not when you are making the transaction, it is how you are calculating, uh, which will define if it's a wage or if it's a salary. But there might be some other differences. But uh, just uh, before using these two words, we need to have some kind of understanding that where one is suitable. When we talk about rewards or compensation, we usually uh, want to talk about total rewards or total compensation. So it's not always about salary or about wage. It is about the total reward or total salary. So total rewards can be non-financial, and they can be financial. So in the non-financial compensation also includes the appreciation that you give to your employees, the contacts they, that they develop when they are working in the organization, the privileges that they have because they are a member of the organization, and sometimes very attractive titles of the jobs are given just to make jobs more attractive and give you respect or something. So these are non-financial rewards, but you also need to manage them because they uh, work very good with the motivation tact as motivation tactics or sometimes uh, uh, other part of the compensation. Now the base pay is the actually the salary or the base salary upon which everything else will be decided. We already talked about salary and wages but there's also some variable pay which means uh, if you're working extra or the basis of your pay are piece rate, one-time bonus, target bonus, commissions, profit sharing, stock ownership, we'll talk about them, and then stock options. Uh, in the benefits, they are usually non-financial, that directly the money is not given to you, but you get these benefits in the form of insurance, pension, which is eventually uh, in the cash form, but you don't get it at that very point and other services uh, that organization provide to you, for example, pick and drop and other things. So th this is a concept of total reward. So whenever you have to get a job or take a job, 
do not just think of salary think of the total reward even as a parking space which is allotted to you is part of your total reward now there's another concept of legally required versus voluntary benefits now the difference is that legally required benefits are the benefits that are required by the law and they must be given by the organizations otherwise they will be legally held responsible if they do not give these uh, required benefits but voluntary benefits are the benefits which are not required by law but organizations do them uh, because they want to take care of their employees and they want them to work so what is the difference minimum wage payment is legally required so if you pay less than minimum wage you will be held responsible legally the organization will be held responsible law defines it but on the other hand company salary system is a separate thing so they pay a lot more than what minimum wage is saying uh, these are law defined these are company defined policies if you do not give these legally required benefits you can be in trouble as an organization or as an employer but if you do it they are voluntary they cannot cause any legal issue usually the legally required benefits are the hygiene factors which means they do not motivate a person but they remove the dissatisfaction of the job whereas the voluntary benefits are the motivational factors so they motivate people then they are more of compliance based which means that you do them because uh, it is a requirement and you need to comply with that requirement uh, but it is company policy dependent because company policies are such that you need to give voluntary benefits so government dependent company dependent change with the changes in law so the moment law requires something else you need to change them but you don't need to change uh, your company policies or you may change your company policies so they, they are not law dependent they are company policy dependent it's a regulatory requirement because there's a there are regulations there are laws behind it so you need to uh, meet these requirements but these are done for the retention of the employees uh, with legally required benefits organizations or the employer do not have any control but here they have a lot of control so this is some of the basic difference between legally required benefits and the voluntary benefits now let's also talk about some of the very very important concept related to compensation the difference between labor rates and labor costs so labor rate and labor costs are two different things some people confuse them and they try and cut the labor rate in order to save labor cost but that's not the right formula actually it's it is dependent on the productivity so what are labor rates labor rates are simply how much money you're paying to a person for a certain amount of work or just how much money you're paying to a person so let's suppose if you're paying a person ten dollars per hour is it good or bad or 500 rupees per hour is it good or bad is it a good labor rate should we cut it should we increase it should we decrease it we can't just say that we need to increase or decrease it we need to understand how it is affecting our labor cost so labor cost is the cost incurred on labor to produce one unit for example if you're giving uh, your employee ten dollar per hour and he or she is making five units in that one hour so your labor cost is two now the question is can there be less labor cost at higher labor rate and the answer is obviously yes you just can think about it and let's also look at an example can there be less labor cost at higher labor rate yes now let's look at employee one you're paying him ten dollars per hour employee two you're paying him 
15 dollars per hour so if you talk about labor rates labor rates are higher here and they are lower here but this this employee one is producing five units per hour but if you divide this 10 with 5 you will get the labor cost which is two dollars per unit now same way if you're giving this person 15 dollars per hour the labor rate is high very high 1.5 times higher than this person but this person is making 10 units in that one hour so if you divide 15 by 10 this is 1.5 so if you look at the labor cost labor cost here is lower let's just uh, look at it again labor rate is lower but labor cost is higher here labor rate is higher labor cost is lower so your prime uh, concern should be labor cost this should be reduced you can put it another way that you're hiring less skilled employee for less money and he's also producing less work which is costing you more here you're employing a skilled worker giving him more rate but he is producing more and giving you saving with the cost so th this is the major difference between labor rates and labor cost you should always be concerned about the labor cost and not about the labor rates it's a, it's a productivity issue how much you produce in how much time and how much you're getting uh, versus how much you're producing so this is all about uh, the compensation uh, concepts we'll also talk about some of the more cons compensation uh, concepts in the next lecture thank you very much